Hello class, we're talking about niches today. Niches on YouTube. You've probably heard all the YouTube gurus talking about it. You need a niche. Well, what is a niche? Uh, good question, glad you asked. First of all, a niche on YouTube when you're starting a video, uh, starting a channel rather, is basically your subject matter. More broadly, it's like what, it's like the group of channels on YouTube that are talking about the subject matter. That's the niche. Uh, so for example, fashion is like the big niche uh, at the highest level that we're talking about. But then you get more specific uh, women's fashion. And then you get more specific modern fashion, like today, contemporary. And then you could also say uh, vintage fashion. And within vintage fashion, you could say uh, 1800s fashion or like 1930s fashion. So that, those are niches. And as you get further down, you niche down, you get more specific and almost to the point where you might not really call fashion a niche. That's maybe just more like the, uh, what would you even call it at that point? The category, right? But as you get more specific, you know, niche basically means a uh, sort of like, this isn't really a niche, but you, it's like a notch in the wall, right? It, it's sort of, it would be like if this just had like a thing like this, that would be what you call a niche. I think architecturally speaking, it's like in uh, Catholic chapels and stuff where they would have little niches for each of the saints with a little altar and stuff. But it's just talking about carving a little piece out, a little piece of YouTube. That's your niche. Now, why do you need it? Uh, let's read a couple questions. I've got questions talking about this from viewers. When starting a YouTube channel, how do you know if, it's, if your idea is too niche? Like, I don't want to bother if it's so specific no one's looking for it. That's a good point. Thank you for that question, Laura. And then Tanya asks, you say to do your research to figure out your audience and niche down, but can you explain it like in practical terms? I can try. <laughs> uh, and you need a niche, why? Why do you need to carve out a little space for yourself on YouTube rather than just be like, this is me, I'm making videos about me and what I like. Because I think a lot of the kids these days, when they think about being a YouTuber, they look at someone like uh, Jenna Marbles who basically just does whatever she wants from week to week and millions of people watch her and they love her. But if you're just starting YouTube, the one thing that Jenna Marbles has is she's famous and she's been a YouTuber for 10 years and so people like her just for her now. You might look at someone like Jack Black, a Hollywood actor who has um, you know, a couple million subscribers on YouTube. He is his niche. That's what he brings to the table that no one else can himself, but he was already famous. So that's why he was able to just waltz onto YouTube, get a million subscribers in like two days, right? You and I, us regular working stiffs, we can't do that. We have to pick a niche. We have to carve out a subject matter that we can talk about. Uh, why? Because of searchability. Did I say that already? <laughs> searchability is the big thing. People aren't searching for you. They're not searching for your name. You'll have to be on YouTube for years and years and get millions of subscribers before people want to just search for you as a person, right? They want to search for a subject term, a subject term, a subject wait, a search term, they're searching for a term. <laughs> and you've got to swoop in there and have a video with those terms. And that's the biggest thing. You're trying, you're trying to get found in the search. You also, because you're starting off as a little fish in a big pond, you want to make the pond as small as possible. And by getting a niche, you do that. Once you choose, once you carve out a space for yourself, you'll be in that space with some other channels but at least that's like much more contained and easy to find you. That's why you want it to be a small pond so other people can find your videos amongst all the other ones that exist. So for instance, if you made a vintage fashion channel, that's kind of a big pond. There are a lot of channels that might be talking about that, but if you say, ooh, I'm gonna talk about just this decade, then that's a much smaller pond. And so when anyone gets on YouTube and searches, you know, 1960s fashion, your channel shows up because that's what you're focusing on. That's your niche. But if you were just doing vintage fashion, maybe people would be uh, 
you know, you'd be a little bit more lost in the shuffle. Now, from video to video, you know, your channel can be sort of a, a more broad niche, but then from video to video, you might shift niches a little bit, right? You wouldn't want to make a vintage fashion channel and just every video talk generally about vintage fashion. One video you want to be like, this is from this time period. We're going to talk about this. Another video, this is specifically this. So you can be found in the searches and you don't get buried with a bunch of other videos. The other big thing about picking a niche is audience expectation. So when your audience finds your videos for the first time, when someone clicks on a video, let's say you made one about cookies and uh, they're like, I love this. Let me check out what other videos this person has made. And you just make a bunch of random videos that have nothing to do with cookies. They're going to be like, okay, I'm not, I'm not watching any more of this person's channel and I'm never coming back because I'm just not interested. I don't know what to expect from this person. But if they click on your channel and all your other videos are about baking, they might be like, oh, this is awesome. It's related to the first video I liked. Now I'm going to watch these other videos. YouTube loves it when people do that, when they watch all your content. And the best way to do that is to make your videos very similar to each other. I know as an artist, you know, we're artists, yo. Uh, <laughs> it feels like not so great to be like, I got to talk about the same thing over and over again. But it's really not so much talking about the same thing over and over again. It's just like being able to put search terms that are similar enough that people think they're seeing the same thing over and over again, but they're really seeing different things. Now there will be some overlap, some similarity. You can't just be totally new every time, but people got to know what to expect. And once they subscribe to you, they want to know what's going to come next week. They want to, they want, they don't want to be surprised because you've got to think of yourself as part of the whole, like people subscribe to your channel because you're their person for this subject. Like, and so that's why they come to your channel. They don't come to your channel for you at first. They, well, they sort of do, but it's you and the subject. How you present the subject. That's, that's the, the thing they're there for that you can't ignore. And like I've talked about in other videos, uh, what was it like the, be the best piece of YouTube advice I can give you? The, the point is you are not, the, you are not what's selling it fully. Like part of, part of it is you and your personality, but people don't come there just for you unless you're a celebrity or you've been on YouTube for years and years. People come there for what you're talking about. And as much as they like you, if you started to talk about random stuff, you'd lose the audience because they just don't know what to expect. How do you pick a niche? Good question. Think about these three things. What do you like talking about? What do you know a lot about? So that's sort of like what, what can you, what from your life, your experience can you bring to it? And then what do, what do people want to hear? What are they searching for? The first two kind of balance each other out because you can find something you don't know a ton about, but you like talking about, or you can find something that you're not terribly excited about, but you know a lot. You can't find one. Don't pick something where you don't like talking about it though. And don't pick something where you don't know anything. You got to find at least some kind of middle ground between those two things. And, then, and that, that's all just because you need to find something that you can talk about week after week for years. And now you, as you are on YouTube and grow your channel, you're your genre can shift, your niche can shift, you can do, you can even like change niches. Some people do that. It's hard to do, but it's, it's something people can do. But you've got to be able to know I'm not going to run out of stuff to talk about after three weeks, right? And you'd be surprised also because sometimes you wonder if I pick a niche, am I going to run out of content? Is this going to really limit me? It really doesn't. Like as surprising as it may seem, you might find that there is some overlap between videos, as I mentioned before, but uh, it's not like you're just going to one day say, I've talked about everything that I can because you can be creative. And then when it comes to what do people want to watch, this is where it gets kind of the practical research side of it. You want to, you can start just on YouTube, think about the topics you're interested in making videos about and then search for them. Look at what, how many videos are being made about it. Look at the views, look at the channels themselves, how many subscribers they have. If, you, if you're searching for something and it seems no one's made a video about this, 
on the one hand, that can be good, but on the other hand, that can be not so good because it might it means there's low uh, competition or no competition, but it also means maybe no one's searching for it. I don't know. You, ideally, you want to find something where there are at least some videos talking about what you want to talk about. Maybe not exactly the same, but um, similar, right? And that's, that's why it's important to niche down because you might see, a bu I go back to the fashion thing. You might see a bunch of other vintage fashion channels, but no one's talking about this one specific thing or some different approach to it. And you're like, dude, I can cover that, you know, and it's fine and it's a good niche and I can talk about other stuff that I can see is working. One of the things on YouTube is you, wanna, you want to be able to see what is working for other people and then kind of copy that a little bit and make it your own. Uh, you can also use uh, keyword tools such as keyword.io. I'll link to all this stuff in the pinned comment. Google Trends is another one, but I don't think it's that useful unless you just want to compare. The, the thing about keyword IO is that you put in one search term and it comes up with related search terms on its own. With Google Trends, you have to put in all the search terms, but it will show you how they compare and how they're doing on YouTube as well as Google search. But you just got to start thinking of YouTube as a search engine first and foremost, and that's what you're trying to stand out on. And uh, you know, I mentioned it before, there's another keyword tool I use all the time called TubeBuddy. You link up your YouTube channel to it and it, it can suggest all these keywords and it shows you how good the keyword is based on things we've already discussed here. Search volume, how many people are looking for it, and uh, competition, how big is the pond. So you want to find the best, uh, the sweet spot on that graph of people searching for it a lot and not a lot of other people making videos about it. But if either one of those things are too low or if the competition is too high, if the competition is too high, the search volume is too low, not good. So you, you got to do a little bit of research to find out what's the sweet spot, where do I think I can, you know, elbow my way in. And you want to feel like there's a little bit of competition, like I said, because you don't want to just say, this is my niche, no one wants to watch it, but it's, <laughs> here I am. Uh, but you never, like sometimes people don't know that they want to watch stuff until you like tell them. So a lot of this is like not hard and fast. Like you could find something that no one's ever talked about before on YouTube and just go in and claim it for yourself and maybe do very well. But it's, it's just not a proven thing yet. You would have to be the one to prove it that a certain sub, a certain really small niche could work. One of those questions was, can I go too specific? You can, but you're not going to know really for sure until you try it out. And you can at the very least see, has any, does anyone search for this at all? <laughs> like if you, if you, there's probably a lot of, uh, there's a lot of book, there's booktube, right? On YouTube, people talking about books. For example, I say that because the, uh, the, the first question I believe the, the username made me think maybe the channel would have something to do about books. But it's like there might be a certain book you want to talk about or a certain series and no one is talking about it and maybe not a lot of people are searching for it either and you might make videos and, pe and people wouldn't watch them. But it's also the thing like you're the only person with those videos so now assuming they're of some quality, whenever anyone wants to look for that they'll go there. I'll give you sort of an example from my experience on my main channel. I talked about INFJ stuff, right, on, on YouTube. I still talk about it. I don't know why I'm using past tense. The, uh, the personality stuff, Myers-Briggs. There weren't a lot, the competition was like not, it was kind of low, but it wasn't like nobody was there. People were making videos, some people were getting lots of views. But when I started making videos, I like doubled down on a single personality type which no one else really did and just went at that to establish like this is where when people search for it this is where they'll see these videos they'll see my videos and eventually at just a game of numbers my video will be the first one to show up even though the search volume maybe wasn't that high you know people weren't like busting out hundreds of thousands of views all the time um, but then eventually it did, and that was just because I, I kept doing it and 
you never know when a search term is going to blow up. Another one, the Enneagram is another personality system. Looking on Google Trends, Enneagram was like not very well searched until last summer. It like, it was, there was a huge spike. It blew up. And I kicked myself that I wasn't like following the trends closely because that would have been a perfect time for someone who had been making Enneagram videos on YouTube to, you know, catch fire and really take advantage of the search volume. So all that is to say is you can get too specific on YouTube, but you just never know. And there is something good about claiming a space that doesn't have much or any competition because then you're the only game in town. But you also run the risk of no one ever watching your videos because they're not looking for it. So it's really, that's a judgment call. Niching down is good generally because it keeps you specific. It carves out your specific space. And a lot of a lot of what really carves you out as a creator individually is part of it's your niche, but also it's your personality and like your perspective and your angle on it, which isn't always entirely captured by niche, right? So you could have two people in a niche where they're both talk, I keep bringing up the fashion just because it's the easiest one for me to talk about for some reason, but you can have two people who are talking about 1930s fashion, but one person is just like very much about how do you make it and then another person can just be like Wow, look at all these pictures. Look at how great it was. This is what was popular, you know So it's like talking about the same thing. It's the same niche, but it's like different perspectives or just like the style one person could be very like informational and educational and the other person could just could be very bubbly and humorous so that's another angle on it, which isn't exactly niching down, but it's like doing your research to see who else is in the niche, how are they approaching it, how can I do it differently so that I can maybe even talk about the same exact things they're talking about, but in such a different manner that people will watch my videos in addition to or instead of their videos, right? Because I bring, I bring something to the table that no one else is bringing, even though we're talking about the same things. In some ways, again, with, uh, my, with Frank James, my main channel, I think that's part of what helped me out is that no one else was really do it, talking about Myers-Briggs in kind of a loose, fun way. And so that's what I started to do. And that's when I saw views pick up. Uh, at, after I had been doing it for a while and I was like, no one else is being like jokey and fun. So I was like, let me do that. Worked out. Well, a few concerns you might have about niching down. You might be like, will it limit my audience and will it limit what I, ha what I can talk about? As I mentioned before, it doesn't really limit what you can talk about as much as you would think because there, there's just so many angles you can take with, with something. You talk about car repair, right? During the year, there are different things that could influence what kind of videos you talk about. Car repair for a long trip during the holidays, oh, during quarantine, uh, making sure your car that's sitting out in the garage not running is going to start again, <laughs> you know? Um, ooh, wintertime, snow, uh, the summertime, how do you keep your car running? Uh, or It could also be like, talk about history, talk about... Um, the trends that are going on. You never know like what what's going to happen in the world and what kind of trends are going to pop up. So you've just got to be aware of that and kind of go along with it. I remember a year or two ago, Minecraft got really big on YouTube and a ton of different people started making Minecraft videos even though their niche wasn't gaming, but they were able to tie it in. So you're not really limited. Even, you know, like if you have a cooking channel, Minecraft gets big, you make a Minecraft cake. See, it's like you're not, you're not that limited. And in terms of audience, you would be shocked at how many huge channels there are that talk about super niche things. Some of my favorite channels, one is called Mentor Pilot. He talks about aviation. I'm not a pilot, like I just find it interesting to hear someone talk about something they know really well that I don't know anything about. That guy has over half a million subscribers. Or you look at another channel that I absolutely love called Townsends. The guy makes, he dresses up in 1700s clothes and cooks food in the 1700s style. Do I have any interest in cooking uh, in a Dutch oven over some coals? No. Do I have any interest in dressing up like I'm George Washington? 
No, but I love watching his stuff because it's just fascinating to, to, to watch. That's about it. There are other channels that I can think of other ones like people talking about medieval clothing, people talking about archery, people talking about uh, <laughs> Myers-Briggs, stuff that you would be like, that's so niche. How could that channel get any viewers? But it's like, they do because people like to hear about stuff that's, that's the whole thing I talked about before. A lot of people don't know they're interested in something until they see your video and they're like, oh, I want to watch more. I want to learn more. I subscribe to, I bring up the fashion stuff so much. I, I subscribe to women's fashion channels just because I find it interesting and I like the YouTuber. It's really strange how much uh, niching actually can get you more viewers than if you were just general and people didn't know what to expect. Like the specificity is something that your audience can grab onto and that's a good thing. That's why you need a niche. That's why the niche is nice. I appreciate you watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this lecture and uh, let me know if you have any other questions related to YouTubing. Uh, if there's anything that I didn't explain very clearly, let me know. And uh, yeah, join me next time at the College of Tuber Studies.